we found this particular book in the public domain public access so as always no copyright breach or infringement was intentional and we bring it again as education alone for all it's actually quite an interesting book uh, and this is by the Reverend G. R. Sanderson with the preface and he writes well he wrote since nations began to exist up to the present hour all through the history of our race no nation has ever had a being which has gathered around itself an interest half so profound as that which attaches to the Jewish people nor attached alone it is interwoven with their very existence and circumstances in all periods like the lifeblood of the heart permeating every particle of the physical system interest pervades everything relating to the ancient people of God it is incorporated with the origin perpetuity and ultimate destiny runs through their captivities and emancipations with the liberations or the trials tribulations they went through and then their liberation from them all their exaltations and depressions their gatherings and dispersions when they were scattered across or through all your nations throughout all the nations their victories and defeats their opulence and poverty their decimations and increase that they were killed off in mass numbers etc and then they came back and they increased their fidelity and apostasy they were of God but then they turned their back on him and followed idols pagan idols of different other nations that had taken them as uh, captives they embraced all of those while they were there in that land their decimations and increase their fidelity and apostasy felt in the marvellous interposition of Jehovah in their behalf in the honours bestowed and the scourges inflicted by a hand equally righteous in all its ways a people of profound interest the receivers of the divine law and for ages the sole depository of the revealed will of heaven with the religion and the polite, was it polity alike from God the people whence sprung the world's only hope a people on whose sin darkened sky arose the bright the morning star a people who though now scattered and peeled and torn are yet to be brought in with the fullness of the Gentiles as the diamond once flashing in its own brightness on the coronet of beauty and power but displaced and lost amid the dust of earth yet again recovered and cleansed from the gathered obscurations of many years shall yet again flash forth in the sunlight of heaven with an unrivaled splendour so shall the once exalted but long and still depressed Jewish nation be lifted up by an almighty power to an altitude of grandeur such as prophetic lips alone would dare to utter oh that's very poetic very expressive there from this particular person Ha Jehudim and Megvir Israel supplies a want long felt by the student of this wonderful people many ponderous tomes or tomes are sometimes searched in vain for a single fact or circumstance relative to the Jew or Judaism. Here, within a reasonable compass, is brought together a mass of information such as many volumes would be sifted in vain to furnish. Unquestionably, many learned and devoted men have written on the subject and yet have failed to accomplish all that the present volume has achieved. For such a work, the learned and accomplished author has enjoyed or had enjoyed special qualifications satisfactorily and successfully had he performed it himself for many years a devoted Jew a distinguished rabbi a profound scholar a tireless student to the hour Dr. Freshman possessed abilities qualities and facilities for the work undertaken such as few men in any land could claim and it is surprising how much is crowded into a volume of less than 500 pages everything apparently relating to the Jewish people their manners, customs, religion, language, literature practices, belief, temple, money schools, churuguri whatever that is, lost tribes rabbis, traditions is given in the volume so that to the reader the marvel is how so much is found within say more a compass to the theological student whether old or young but especially to the latter this volume will be a priceless treasure no such student can afford to be without it no minister's library will be complete if Ha Jehudim be not there. The lover of Jewish literature will find the following pages of a mine of gold to him or her. 
not a mine where now and then a little gold may be found and then after much labor but gold all through the mine and inviting acceptance the devout christian will as he reads or she reads be constantly reminded of the purity and goodness the truth and justice of his heavenly father jesus is heavenly father his sympathies for the jew and for humanity will grow stronger and his love for his god will grow warmer as he reads ha jehudim and mikveh israel the richest blessings of heaven is invoked on a book the reader and the author and we hope that that is also uh, bestowed upon you the viewer the listener belleville november 23rd 1869 introduction in one of the grandest works that mortal mind has created, there stands the record. Si monumentum quares circumspice, something in Latin. With how much more justice such words might be prefixed to the Jews, it were needless to prove. Amid all the vicissitudes of time and the revolutions of empire, Judaism has remained permanent, the only vestige of the remote past which has entirely defied decay or dissolution. Mightier people than Israel have appeared on the great stage of humanity, but they have vanished like the shadowy figures of a phantasmagoria. On their ruins, other people have arisen, but conquest and admixture have so modified them that beyond a few centuries, no man can trace a certain ancestry. Why is it that 3,300 years have passed and have left but this one verdant line amidst an immensity of desert, this one solitary star in a firmament of darkness? When of old men raised their vast structures of physical power they employed none but human materials the elements which alone could give stability principles of eternal right derived from the eternal source were altogether wanting time therefore did its work by the ordinary process of waste of antagonism of brute force the gigantic fabrics which already contained the germs of decomposition common to them with the founders were swept from the earth nations suffered this fate so completely that their very existence is to be traced rather to the conquerors than to themselves. In the era which separates ancient from modern history, a new chaos supervened, as though to show man that his works stand in vain against the laws which regulate him and them. The Dark Ages, as this era is called, and out of which modern civilization grew, as the original earth grew out of the first chaos, not only effectually covered with it its veil all that antiquity had created by merely human agencies, but it enveloped in and in a penetrable, penetrable shroud the origin of all that modern times we're known uh, were to know from that same source three things survived the general wreck and form connecting links between the past and the future first the literature of old struggled through the storm when the strongest and most mighty people perished nor left their vestiges behind the small voice of the immortal minds was born on the airwaves of time to an eternal future over this immense now, patient from the divine that which could annihilate the mortal works, however substantial, passed harmlessly. Some fragments of papyrus or parchment were consumed, and with them a few stray ideas were lost. But the great truths which genius had investigated and recorded, the sublime language in which the soul of one man in one age had spoken to the souls of all men in all ages, the lofty conceptions by which morality had proved its connection with an imperishable and heavenly origin, these no physical convulsions could destroy they were above and beyond such accidents secondly christianity survived the fiery ordeal because that too owed its existence to the eternal revelation of sinai or at sinai and man could only modify it not extirpate it did not pass through the flames unscathed because it contained mortal elements but its morality its god teaching remained intact in the battle which it had been compelled to maintain against the barbarous forces of northern and eastern idolatry it had fought on terms so unequal that it had been necessitated to call in strategy to its aid the luxurious easterns were best ruled through their passions the uncouth northerners transplanted to the genial south were best governed by their fears those who followed the patriarch of the greek church these the father of the roman church those followed the patriarch of the greek church these the father of the roman church but in both churches what had been abstract faith, that is, the tie which binds man to forms and modes of belief, became concrete religion. Maybe he's trying to say there was like set, fixed, 
This result was arrived at through the agency of those who had recourse to strategy and who, in adopting expedience themselves, by the profession and practice, sought to prove their efficacy. Priestcraft was what had been Christianity, a change and a sad one, but there was hope while vitality was not destroyed that some future elementary revolution may restore the original combination. Then charity, which is the doctrine of abstract faith, means love for universal mankind, shall cease to be what con concrete religion made it, love only for self and self's imitators. Then man shall acknowledge that true God worship consists not in observance of any particular customs or traditions or washing your hands, washing your plates, all that sort of stuff, but in the humble, zealous cultivation of those qualities by which the Eternal has made himself known to the world. So all your tassels on the end, your garments, all that sort of stuff, on your shoes, whatever, uh, shouting at people, the, the Bible, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, no. That's not the way, really. Yeah. Uh, okay, so... The man shall acknowledge that true God worship consists not in observance of any particular customs, but in the humble, zealous cultivation of those qualities by which the eternal has made himself known to the world. So basically what it's saying there is all those traditions, customs, etc., pff, nothing, you know, they're just practices. A lot of time you don't have the uh, times behind it, you know, you don't have that uh, old time love for it and all that sort of stuff right? it's just a chore it's just something you do yeah. because you've been told to do it sort of thing do you understand okay, so there's more profit in those qualities that were passed on you know like have love for your neighbour uh, compassion be charitable, kind, all that sort of stuff, you know, feed the poor, clothe the ragged and all that sort of stuff, right? All that sort of moral, ethic qualities, that's what it's talking about. Okay, then man shall acknowledge that true God worship consists not in observance of any particular customs, but in the humble, zealous cultivation of those qualities by which the eternal God has made himself known to the world. The members of one creed shall not arrogate to themselves peculiar morality and peculiar salvation, denying both to the members of other creeds, but they shall learn that morality and salvation are the cause and effect of all earnest endeavours to rise to the knowledge of revelation, or what was revealed, yeah, or revealings. Men shall cease to attempt the substitution of one set of forms for another set of forms. They shall satisfy themselves with being honest and dignified, exponents of their own mode of belief and shall not seek to coerce or coerce what heaven itself has left unfettered. The rights of conscience, they shall strive to remove all obstacles to the spread of God worship by showing how superior are the happiness, the intellectuality, the virtue of its professors, but they shall stop there, not even for the sake of securing their object, preferring their own faith for that of another. This was the original combination under which Christianity was called into existence. This was the power which enabled it to survive the shock which had destroyed all else. And to this must it return before its mission can be perfectly accomplished. What the teachings of Sinai were to the children of Abraham, the teachings of the other mount were to be the rest of the world. Were to be to the rest of the world. One was not, supersede, was not to supersede the other, but to render it accessible. Thirdly, Judaism and the Jews escaped the general wreck not quite purely because rabbinism from within and persecution from without did partially what priestcraft did entirely but with enough of the divine left to withstand what must have proved fatal to anything less imbued with the spirit of the eternal. While nation contended with nation and race with race all made common cause against the people of God i.e. the uh, Israelites, the Jews, etc. Diversity of religion knew of no harmony but that which taught scorn of Israel. Men, through their various forms and tenets, looked with less fidelity to heaven than to those spots of earth which held Jews as objects for persecution. If they differed in all else, they were unanimous in hatred, while the doctrine of faith had failed to inculcate love, they had found excuses for contempt and cruelty, but through all Judaism and the Jews remained. 
through all Judaism and the Jews remained. Over the fear face of nature, the apostles a convulsion. Heaven sees its flooding rains, its searing lightnings. Earth appears by volcanic agency, open to entomb, and sea carried beyond its boundaries engulfs the ruins spread from earth and heaven. Desolation holds undisputed sway and seems to threaten that there, at least, life is forever extinct, vitality forever annihilated. But the Spirit of God still shines in the glorious sun in the new forms of existence that permeate wave, earth and air in the elasticity with which all recovers itself in obedience to the divine law. Day and night, summer and winter, shall never cease. So it has been with Judaism. What physical convulsions do for nature, human brutality has done for Judaism and with life like effect. The essence of eternal existence has never been eradicated and still from ruin, from desolation, from despair. New life has gushed with unabated vigour, new vitality soared with pinion over sublime. And why? Because in Judaism the eternal implanted the germs from which, with seeds, from which salvation is ultimately to spring. Because, no matter what form religion may since have been, for wise purposes, permitted to assume, all that it contains of holy and pure is identical with the holiness and purity of Judaism, as taught by Moses and the prophets. Meanwhile, the brooklet that took its rise in the valley of the Euphrates runs eternally on towards the illimitable ocean. It defies mortal attempts to dam its course. It disdains to mingle with adjacent waters. Clouds at times obscure it its day, but the sun of its guidance still penetrates to illuminate. And why is this? Because the spring that supplies the brooklet wells from an omnipotent source, because the waters of its bosom are the waters of life everlasting, because the works of man only are perishable, while the works of God are the hills that change not. And what light does the world now appear to the Jew? Let us try to look at it as it presents itself to him. Is there much in it fitted? at first sight at least, to shake his faith in the religion which he has received from his ancestors? When he surveys the systems around him and compares his own with them, what is there to make him conclude that his is less pure, less elevated, less divine? In pagan lands what does he behold but idols, grim, uncouth and monstrous, adored by a worship that is childish, immoral or bloody, and connected with dogmas which are ridiculous, incredible or revolting? Is it for the system of Brahmanism or Buddhism that the Jew is to forsake the Institute of Moses? Is it for such notions as the Shastas can give him of Vishnu that he is to re renounce the simple yet sublime and spiritual idea which the Old Testament presents of Jehovah? Is he to turn away from him that sits between the Cherubim to bow before Juggernaut? The Jew is not likely to exchange even the Talmud, foolish and absurd as its teachings, is for the sacred books of the Brahmin. Modern Judaism, corrupt as it is, placed beside the gross and sensual system of Hinduism, appears a spiritual and heavenly conception. In Mohammedan countries, the Jew meets just as little to open his eyes for the, to the errors of his creed. He looks around at vast empire for the fruits that ought to accomplish the religion of heaven. He sees them nowhere, neither social virtue nor public justice. He himself encounters only contumely and wrong he goes back to his former creed and clings to it with founder reverence or fonder reverence to that ever because it's like us the ministry of the worship we look at, okay, we look around we, we had a former life as everybody does a natural life and we went through all these life experiences right heard about the word of God but we're still like remained in the world you know doing all the worldly things etc etc committing sins but then we came to a stage where we realised through the help of the uh, original ancient Tab Asher Yishara uh, Ateka Old Testament manuscripts translated in English as were the uh, original ancient very old Galilean Aramaic New Testament manuscripts by a native born Aramaic speaking translator Victor in Alexander okay all these things that led us to this point made us realize why the hell will we want to live that life that former life continuing that with all its misery pain treachery deceit um, let downs heartaches whatever right? all those unnecessary 
horrible things that we have to experience, right? I guess it's a part of life, but why would we want to stay within that life? Yeah, that worldly life. There is a better, more profitable, abundant, blessed life with God, okay? Under God, okay? We have experienced that miraculous thing. We're not going to say, oh, we got healed and arm grew back, all that sort of stuff. We're not talking about that. What we're saying is like this. We can't explain it. These blessings that happen to us. Some will say, oh, it's just coincidence. It's just pure luck. A chance, you know, by chance. But we don't believe that. Okay? We believe that someone at a supermarket paid our shopping bill, right? Because we took the time to consider a lady, possibly his wife. She had three objects, products or whatever in her cart. We had 20 or 30 or whatever. You know, a couple of hundred dollars worth of goodies or whatever. And we said, they come with this one because you only got three or four. He recognized that he was possibly a Muslim because she was a Muslim, right? Obviously, he'd probably, if it's his wife, he's a Muslim, right? So he decided to pay for it, right? Okay. We went to McDonald's, uh, a daughter's friend, and because she was <laughs> a cigarette smoking addicted, right? She had no money to buy some, so she's looking on the road, as some of these other people do, right? And older people. You see them doing that, right? Looking in bins and on the rain, and stuff with, with that nicotine buzz, right? Dose. Um, so she was a little upset, okay? We didn't have enough with McDonald's. A couple of dollars short. It's like $27. We had about 26, 10 cents or something like that. And these people, this lady happened to sit next to us, right, in McDonald's. And she said, oh, here you go. She had a couple of children, right? Here you go. Here, here's a couple of dollars so you can buy McDonald's. Oh, thank you, thank you, lady. Told the girl to cheer up, you know, she had it upside down front. And then, so I said to her, uh, you got to go buy some McDonald's so you can eat, yay, you know. Still had a sad smile, because I guess he didn't have a cigarette. And then the husband come around from the back of these seats and said, um, here's a whole lot of food we bought for you. McDonald's, you know, it was about 30 bucks worth or something. We're like, oh, wow, thank you, thank you very much. See, so that's blessings for some reason, right? We believe it's we're getting blessings because... We're out there, you know, not trying to get something off God, right? You know, okay, God, I'm going to do this now. now payback time, you know, that sort of thing. It's just basically we feel we have a heart, okay? We're, we're moved by, like Christ was, there's a poor person sitting on the side of the road. It looks like he's starving and stuff, okay? But we're also told in the back of our mind, or the little voice that might be wary because this guy could be have some mental issues, some traumas. He could be seeking to get money for his addictions, alcohol, weed, whatever, right? All that sort of stuff. So use your brain and do something better, right? Do something um, like go buy them food or something instead of giving them money, right? So they can't go and buy that addiction, you know? Because you're leading them further down that path by providing them the money to do that, right? Unbeknownly, right? But don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing according to scripture, right? So you feed them all that sort of stuff, right? You go help somebody else, like a little old lady crossing the road, she falls down, you help her up, whatever, you know, push your trolley for her or something like that, all those sort of things, okay? It just becomes natural. But you're not expecting a reward. You know, where's my reward, God? You know, oh, $10,000 and all this sort of stuff, you know, give me my reward, you know? It's, it's in time. Yeah, that, if you want to say... Uh, that consequence, that karma comes back to you in God's time, yeah? And other things have happened, like we suddenly got ooh, nearly broke, boom, the tax department owes us money, well, boom, somebody shares, because they're long past, but we, they were just to us now, right? Come to us, yeah? Et cetera, et cetera. Boom, the tax department owes us money, boom, 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 like that, right? Whoa, those are blessings, we believe those are blessings. Our channel went from, well, we're happy it, went, it was on 1,000 subscribers, but then it just suddenly went boom, okay? Um, I think we're up to 197 or something, you know, something like that, or oh, maybe, yeah, 1,097, something like that. Uh, haven't looked, if <laughs> you're sort of remembering from the top of your head. Yeah, things like that, okay? Um, there were demonic forces here because someone played around with the occult. Uh, Ouija boards, all that stuff. Even they told them not to do it here. Don't bring it in the house. They don't want to listen. And they had these mental issues, attacks, and whatever. And now they're gone. 
and they're happier. Yeah, they're away from it and other things. Okay. This is just relating to these experiences. Okay, we're not naming anyone. Okay, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. We're just relating our life experiences to show that there's a better life. Okay, and that's with God, with the Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, way better, way better, more abundant, more blessings. You know, etc. etc. Than that former worldly, earthly life. You know of all those things lust, perversions, desires, whatever that we were into, right? The alcohol, the drugs, whatever. Okay, way better. So why would we go back to that? So these Jews are the same, right? They realise the same thing. They looked out in the world and said, what the hell is it? Idols? What the hell? What the? I'm clinging to my freaking Jewish texts, you know? Like this guy said, even though at times they look like they're ridiculous, they're like still clinging to them because there's something in it, right? Compared to what's out there in the world. 